Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspirational Moments. I am Reverend Glendale Miller from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. This program is designed to inspire, motivate, and encourage as you make a difference right where you are. I invite you in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we are thankful for yet another marvelous day that you have made. Yes, we will rejoice. Yes, we will magnify and praise thy holy name. Bless our efforts for the saving of a soul. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. A pleasant good morning is extended to all of you. And I pray blessings upon you, your family, and that as you journey this day and the days to come, that the promises of God will indeed be fulfilled in your life. I point you to 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 through 9. I read to you from the King James Version which gives this rendering wherein he greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now, ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. I've been inspired to share with you this morning from the subject, I still have joy. Why don't you confess that this morning? After all the things we've been through, many of you tuning in at this hour can say, I still have joy. Most of you would agree that we are living in difficult times, desperate times, times that try the very souls of men. There is an old proverb that says desperate times call for desperate measures. The meaning of this proverb is that in adverse circumstances, actions that might have been rejected under other circumstances may become the best choice. This phrase likely originates with a saying of the ancient Greek physician Hippocrates, which appears in his aphorisms for extreme diseases, extreme methods of cure, as to restriction are most suitable, end of quote. 
we now find ourselves living this very proverb. An extreme disease has spread across this world and extreme methods of cure are in place. We have restrictions placed upon us. Travel has been at a all time slow. Wearing protective mask is the new standard. Social distancing is the new way of life. And stay at home orders are in effect. Everything is upside down. There is a commercial on television that says something like dining rooms have become offices, bathrooms have become break rooms, garages have become gyms, and the children have become the new co-workers. Things are totally different now and the stress level in people is rising dramatically with the world literally on lockdown confinement to our homes not being able to go to the beach out to the parks to the restaurants or have things the way we used to have them in these difficult times. The question becomes, how do we maintain joy during this and other difficult times? These are desperate times. People are running here and running there. Desperate that feeling showing or involving a sense of hopelessness that a situation is so bad as to be impossible to deal with. Many feel this current situation is impossible to deal with. We have protesters in camouflage, some carrying placards, and they are out protesting for changes to take place within our country. The governmental and medical systems have made us more vulnerable than we ever thought we could be. Unemployment is equal to, if not surpass, that of the Great Depression. People are hoarding toilet paper and other supplies unsure of what the future holds and now a threat of farming with products agriculture is on the rise just the other day to be exact, it was announced yesterday about the need for backyard farming on our national news. Encouraging our citizens here in the Bahamas to give strong consideration to providing the basic vegetables right 
in our backyards. The coronavirus has placed a gloomy feeling over our land. and has left people, so many, in a state of panic and fear and a sense of hopelessness. But our subject invites us to maintain our sense of joy that we ought to be able at the end of the day exclaim I still have joy life's been rough and difficult but I still have joy I've lost some things along the way but I still have joy. Joy is a noun, a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. You've no doubt have heard people say that joy and happiness are not the same thing. They will say that happiness is circumstantial. It is based on outside influence and joy is not. That is true. Happiness is regulated by outside influences. If it's sunny outside and the humidity is low, Many of us are happy. If we get a big bonus, we're happy. Yet when we talk about joy, it's often a conversation about our emotions. Joy is a knowledge that runs deeper than any emotion could ever go. Real joy is based in the knowledge of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and him being an ever-present help in the time of trouble. That is true regardless of what is going on around us and cannot be changed. When we limit joy to a feeling, we devalue it. When we think of it as solely emotional, we rob ourselves of the full experience that joy gives us. Listen, my family, joy is a posture we find ourselves in when we praise the one and only true and living God, the one who is with us, who will never forsake us, the risen Savior who defied death, hell, and the grave to be our advocate. Kirk Franklin said, someone asked a question, why do we sing? When we lift our hands to Jesus, what do we really mean? Someone made, made, we want, made us wondering when we sing our song at times. We may be crying and nothing's ever wrong. That's joy simply because of who he is and what 
he means to you and to me. If joy were only a feeling, commandments such as in Philippians 4 and 4, rejoice always, and again I say rejoice, and rejoice in the Lord, would be ludicrous. Understand, God created our capacity for emotions. He knows the ways they bent and sway to and from the emotional manifestation of joy. When he commands us to rejoice, he knows that we don't always feel like it. He knows that there are moments when feeling joy seems impossible, in appropriate, even offensive in the face of the brokenness of the world. But because joy runs deeper than what we feel, at any given moment, we can still have the joy in desperate times. Joy that is rooted in the reality of the resurrection and power of God that transcends brokenness, goes beyond despair, and surpasses tribulations. One songwriter said it like this, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. So now that we understand what joy is, the question becomes, how do we have joy in difficult, desperate, and depressing times? I want to offer this morning First of all, we need to rely on the promises of God. Hebrews 6 and 13 says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all of the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. His promises are true, and he cannot lie. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, This promise, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. When God makes a promise, it will come to pass. A promise is a covenant or declaration that one will do exactly what they say they will do, or something will happen that they say will happen. Man will make a promise and turn around and lie right in your face. But when God makes a promise, it will come to pass. But more than that, more than that, not only are we to rely on the promises of God, but we also need to rely on God's presence. Understand, my family, remember Romans 5 and 3 said, by, said, but we glory in tribulation. Glory in tribulation does not mean celebrating when bad things have come. However, it does mean that we can believe that God is doing a 
redemptive work during this during these times of despair the word redemptive means that god does not waste a hurt or disappointment he is using them to shape and build us into his image and likeness when we go through desperate times we often pray and seek god more intensely than at other times god is using this current situation to get people's attention and draw them closer to him people are praying now more than ever so the key is we need to rely on his presence the 23rd psalm verse 4 david says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me david writes that he does not fear walking through the valley of the shadow of death because god is with him he knew that god was with him despite what he was going through. God is with us through this pandemic, just as he is with us in all the other times in life, good and bad. In the 139th Psalm, verses 7 through 10, David talks about the presence of the God, of, of the presence of God being everywhere. He says, Whether shall I go from thy presence or thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make up my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. We must understand that God is here with us and he will never leave us so we can depend on his presence. Remember, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Just like the three Hebrew boys when King Nebuchadnezzar had them thrown into the fiery furnace, he looked over into the furnace and said in Daniel 3 verses 23 through 24, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Baron Cage made the song, The Presence of the Lord is Here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. We must rely on his presence, brothers and sisters, in desperate, difficult, and despairing times. Not only is he here, but he is working something out in us. We must rely on God's presence. But not only that, we must rely on God's power. Paul said in Ephesians 1, 19 and 21, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? 
to us would who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come the greek word translated great means strong or great and it appears only here in the new testament this word obviously wasn't sufficient for paul to express god's great power so he added the word incomparably or in in greek hyperbolon related to a verb that literally means to throw beyond the usual mark or to excel or surpass so the full idea of the expression hyperbolon suggests exceeding greatness is that of a power beyond measure a super abounding or surpassing power power that is more than enough paul gives us an idea of the power of god when he writes that the power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority this is the same power that raised jesus from the dead this is the same power that raised Lazarus from the dead. This is the same power that raised the Shudamite woman's son from the dead. This is the same power that split the Red Sea. The same power that, that brought water from a rock. The same power that did all of that and brought you and I through. Oh, my family this morning, you ought to be excited that in spite of all that we have been going through, in spite of all we have gone through, we can say this morning, I still have joy. That ought to be the confession on all of our lips. We ought to let the world know that yes, the fiery darts have hit us from time to time. Yes, we have been ridiculed and we have been ostracized. We've been called everything but a child of God. We have lost family members. We have lost loved ones. We, we have lost friends along the way. But in spite of it all, we can still say this morning, I still have joy. Father in heaven, I thank you this morning that in the midst of all that we are going through, yes, the winds of adversity is blowing. Yes, the lightning is zigzagging. And yes, the storm clouds are resting upon us, God. But we ask 
at this moment that you would continue to help us, strengthen us, and make us into what you have called us to be. Help us to express joy in the midst of these difficult times. Give us that expression to celebrate in the midst of calamity. Help us to stand tall in the midst of the fiery trials that we go through. Yes, we've seen the lightning flashing. Yes, we've heard the thunder roll and Yes, we have felt sin break us dashing, trying to conquer our souls. But, but oh, this morning we, we've heard the voice of our Savior telling us, be still. Amen. Don't you give up, be still. Don't you throw in the towel, be still and fight on. He promised never to leave us. Never to leave us alone. I'm a living witness this morning. I still have joy. And many of you listening at this hour. You're saying Reverend Miller. I thought about throwing in the towel. I thought about giving up. I thought about quitting. But, but when I. Think of the goodness of Jesus. Glory to God. And what he has done for me. When I think of how he has set me free. How he brought me out of so many difficult moments in my life. I too can join in saying I still have glory to God joy. That's what separates the Christian from the non-Christian. That's what separates one who have a relationship with God. We're still able to say, I still have joy. I, I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord always. I'm still going to bless his holy name. Thank you so much for sharing with us on inspirational moments. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be yours now and always. Hallelujah. Still have joy. Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. I said, let's rejoice. Let's rejoice in the Lord. In Jesus' name. God bless you. And God keep you is our prayer.